so connected. I would just thank the Lord for you, wherever you are across the world, amen. We are so grateful that the Lord God Almighty has blessed us to be an influence to you and that you find it appropriate and necessary to join us in worship on a Sunday morning. God bless you. Please continue to engage with us as we seek the face of the Lord God in worship and thanksgiving unto God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are, uh, at this time, we're just going to be uh, standing together, believers. Hallelujah. We're going to call on Brother Karen. He's going to present the service before the Lord for us. Amen. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we come before your presence this morning, Lord, we just want to thank you for this another day. Father, we just want to thank you for this another Sunday morning. Father, as we have come together in corporate worship, you say where two or more are gathered, touching anything concerning me, I'm in the midst to bless and to do something marvelous. Father, we lift you up this morning because you are worthy to be lifted up. Father, we lift you up this morning because you are worthy to be praised. Father, we lift you up this morning because you are worthy to be adored. Father, there's none like you, God. There's none like unto you. You are the king of all kings. You are the lord of all lords. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And Father, we invite your presence in our midst this morning. Father, this service is all about you. Father, we come in corporate worship to lift you up. God. God, we set our agendas aside, God, and we put your agenda at the forefront. And Father, we pray this morning that God, you will come down, God Almighty, and that God, you will fellowship with us, that God Almighty, your presence will bring about transformation in the believer's life this morning, that your presence, God Almighty, will bring about, God, whatever desire we come this morning with, that God Almighty, your expectations will be met in you. Father, we pray this morning that God God Almighty, your presence will dwell with us richly. God, we come against every plan of the enemy. God, we come against every diabolical spirit that is in operation. God, we shut down every forces of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, we say, God Almighty, let your spirit arise and let every enemy be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we commit this service into your capable hands. God, have your way this morning, God, as we bless you and magnify you and lift you up in Jesus. Jesus name we say amen praise be to the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise be to the name of the Lord hallelujah praise be to the name of the Lord hallelujah praise be to the name of the Lord hallelujah praise be to the name of the Lord hallelujah Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise. Come on, brethren. Pray. Let's lift up a praise unto God. Hallelujah. We're not waiting on anything. No indication from anybody. We are just here to bless him and to give him thanks, honor, praise, and glory for his faithfulness. Come on. He has kept us through another week. He has been faithful, provided for us, made ways for us. We are just here to bless him and to honor him, to glorify him. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. You in your homes, you in your cars, wherever you are watching us, come on. An attitude of praise and thanksgiving right in your kitchen, right in your bedroom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lifting up our praise, our expectation unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God, hasn't he been good, he's been very good, hasn't he been a provider, hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody was healed over the week past, somebody was provided for over the week past, somebody got a miracle, somebody got a breakthrough, somebody got something from God, and we're just here to lift our praise unto God and to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are at home. You have a bed. You have a roof up above you. Praise be to God. We have life and health and strength. You can raise your hand. You're in your sound mind. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Is there anything to give God thanks for? The sun is shining. 
thank God for a new day. Thank God I'm a part of the family of God. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God, I am grateful. Say grateful, grateful, grateful. Father, I'm grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. You are faithful, oh God. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Yeah, man, faithful, faithful, faithful. Gratitude in the heart of the believer. Gratitude flowing from the heart. Want you have thanksgiving and gratitude in your heart. It cannot stay in the heart. It must flow out of the heart unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We're bragging on God this morning. We are bragging on the Lord this morning. My God, the shirt I'm wearing, the clothes I'm wearing, the shoes I have on. God provided. Praise be God for provision. Praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord. Praise. Praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 As we get ready to continue to stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Hymn number three. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just feel like we have some gratitude in the house. I feel like somebody's heart is welled up with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Somebody got a breakthrough over, the holiday, over, this, over, this, over this week, man. Somebody got some deliverance. Somebody got something from God. Praise God Almighty. I don't know who, who, but somebody got some deliverance from the Lord. We rejoice with you. We are glad with you. We praise God with you. We magnify the Lord with you. Hallelujah. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of shall prevail standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of Christ my Savior standing standing 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am standing. If I'm not doing anything else, I am standing on the promises of God. Praise the Lord. Let us turn our Bibles to Psalms 27. Praise God. I don't want us to, to, to rush this psalm, neither do I want us to go too slow. Amen? But as I want us to be meditating on it. Praise the Lord as we echo it, as we declare it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Roy, man, is going to come and lead us alternately. Praise the Lord. And immediately after him, the praise team will come and lead in worship. Praise God. Psalms 27. Good morning. The scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 27 and we'll be reading alternately. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Let be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Put me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Fourteen and last, wait, wait on, on the, the Lord, Lord, be of good, good courage, courage, and, and he, he shall strengthen thy heart. heart. Wait, I say, on, on the, the Lord. Lord. There endeth a portion of God's holy word. It shall be honored by saying, Thanks be to God. God, praise God, praise God. Can we just lift our hands to the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the honor. Jesus, hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, God. We exalt your holy name this morning. Oh, God, we declare today, God, that there is none like unto you. Come on, we are here to worship the Lord. We are here to praise him. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. I already feel the brush of angels' wings. <laughs> Can somebody worship the Lord for his holy presence that's already here? Oh, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. Oh, God, if we don't even sing a song today, God, our hearts are in a good matter, a good matter to praise you, to praise you and to worship you, to lift you up and to magnify you. Jesus, in respect. Irrespective, God, of what's going on in my life, irrespective of what's going on, I'm here to praise you Ted, today. Hallelujah. We're here to praise the Lord today. We're here to worship him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Before we even start singing, I just want to say to somebody today, it is your right to worship the Lord. And I'm going to encourage you to exercise it today. It is your right to praise him and I'm going to encourage you to exercise it today. This is how we defeat the enemy. We are defeating the enemy today with our worship. With our praise unto Almighty God. Hallelujah. Habakkuk 3 verse 18. It declares that yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Habakkuk knows what's going on around. Eh? A lot of things were happening. Then he said yet I will praise the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Is there anyone today that's going to rejoice in our God? In our God. You are anointed to win. So don't let your circumstances hold you down. You are anointed to win. And all we need to do is give God the glory. Because whatever the Bible said, everything in everything, we are to give him thanks. Because it's the will of God concerning us. One thing he desires is that we love him. And that we are called according to his purpose. According to his purpose, we are called today. Just raise your hands to the Lord. Tell yourself today, I'm anointed to win. I'm anointed to win. I'm anointed to win. Because of that, I am here to worship God irrespective of. I am here to worship my God irrespective of. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me just take myself out of the way and just worship him. And just worship him. And just praise him. He has been good. The Lord has been good. And I just want to declare today to everyone that God is great. He's greatly to be praised. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be? Who shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, they come upon me to eat of my flesh, they shall stumble and fall because of the goodness of God. Because of the goodness of God in my life. The cause of the goodness of God to me is not what I have done. It is not what I have done, but it's because of the goodness of God. He made us all winners. He made us all winners today. We're here to praise him. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. The song says, praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands in praise. Come on, worship the Lord with me. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all time. I vow and I vow to praise you. Come on, praise the Lord. You the good and the bad. I'll praise you. Whether happy or sad. Whether happy or sad. I'll praise you. up in our mind. Praise is what I do. Sing us praise. Praise is what, is what I, I do. do. Jesus. When I want to be close to you. To you. Anybody want to be close to I the Lord? Lift I lift my hands. My hands I lift my hands. In praise. Praise. praise is who I am. Good and the bad. Yes, I pray. 
Hallelujah. We're not here for entertainment. We're here to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We're here to lift up the name of the Lord. Name of Somebody needs to worship the Lord for your victory. Hallelujah. You are a winner, but you need to worship the Lord and praise Him for your victory. Don't listen to our voices. Worship Him for yourself. We're going to sing the song one more time in honoration to our God. Hallelujah. Pray. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Blessed. Blessed Savior. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Yeah, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We give her the highest praise. Jesus, Jesus. We give Lord, we give you, you the highest praise. praise. Oh. Lord, we are singing hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, 
Come on, we give you the glory. Jesus, Jesus we give you the glory. We give, we give you all the glory this morning. The glory. Jesus, we give you all the honor this morning. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We give Lord, we give you, you. Jesus, and what he has done for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, my soul magnifies your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. 
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It is unto your glory, Jesus. Jesus, I will worship. I'll worship and rejoice in my infirmities because it is unto your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship the King of Kings. Somebody worship the Lord of Lords. Somebody worship our Lamb of God. Somebody worship our High Priest. Somebody worship our I and I am. Somebody worship our Alpha and Omega. God is our beginning and He's our ending. He's our first. He's our last. Somebody worship Him. Somebody worship Him. It is unto God's glory. It is unto God's glory. It is unto God's glory. He said his burdens. His burdens are light. Anybody believe it? Worship him because his burdens are light. Fret not yourself. Fret not yourself. Fret not yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. Yeah, praise him. Praise him in the morning. Yes, come on and praise him all day long. Oh, I feel like praising I'm going to praise him. Come on, one more time. I feel, I feel like praising, praising him. I'm going to praise the Lord. I feel like praising, like praising him. Yeah, somebody praise him. Praise him in the morning. Yeah, I'm gonna praise him all day long. Oh, I feel like praising, like praising him. Say, I'm gonna praise the Lord while I have a chance. Yeah. Come on, use your chances and praise him. Praise him in the morning. Yeah, praise him all day long. Holy Ghost, I feel like praising, praising, praising Come on. him. Yeah, and if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. Oh, if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. I'm gonna praise him. Praise him in the morning. Excuse me. Praise him all day Let me long. praise the Lord. I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. One more time. I feel like I feel like praising, praising him. Yeah. Oh, I feel I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him. Yeah, praise him. Right. 
Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. Come on, one more time if you don't. If you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. Don't hinder me. Oh, oh, if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. Oh, raise him. Oh, raise him in the morning. Oh, oh, praise him. Praise, praise him all day long. I feel like, I feel, I feel like, like praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all day long. I feel I feel I feel good, 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 and I feel real wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. I feel good, good, good. I feel real wonderful. Good. Every time, every time I talk about Jesus, yes, I feel good, good, good. Yes, I feel good, good, good. And I feel real wonderful. And every time I talk about Jesus. I feel good, good, good. And I feel good, good, good. And I feel good, wonderful, good. And every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. And I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good, good, good. When the fire came, fire, the fire came, glory, hallelujah, when the fire came, when the Lord sanctified my sins, my sins, my sins were higher than the mountain. Yes, oh, the Lord. Holy Ghost came in. I love that man, that man from Galilee. I love him. I love him. I love that man. I love him. I love him from Galilee. From Galilee. For he has done very much for me, Jesus. And he has taken all my sins. Oh, and then the Holy Ghost came in. Very much for me. Oh, he 
to him. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, Jesus. <laughs> so keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. Oh, there's a race that I must run and i be Jesus, but there's a grace that I must run, and a victory to be won. Lord, give me power every hour. Yes, keep me true. One more time, keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. But there's a race that I must run. Oh, and a victory to be won. Walk in me power every hour. Oh, keep me true. Oh, closer than a brother. Jesus is to me. Oh, he's my dearest friend in everything I need. He's my, he's he's my, my rock, rock, my rock, my shield and hiding place. Oh, closer, closer than a brother, Jesus is to me. Oh, closer, closer than a brother, my Jesus is to me. He's my, my dearest friend in everything I need. He's my rock, my shield and hiding place. Closer than a brother, Jesus is to me. Closer than a brother, my Jesus is to me. He's my dearest friend. In everything I need, yes. He is my rock, my, rock, my, my shield, shield, and hiding place. Closer than a brother, Jesus is to me. For He is, he is my rock, my shield, and hiding place. Yes. Closer than a brother, Jesus is to me. Oh, he He's my rock, he's my rock, my 
church one song we've come this far by faith somebody who can do better than me lean in
Some valley experience sometimes, hard times, difficult situations. But this morning you can declare, we can declare, we have come thus far by faith. Hallelujah. And I tell you something, church, if faith take us thus far, then faith will lead us home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. You may be seated. I honor the King of Kings this morning, and I give him the glory that is due unto his matchless name. He has never left me, never, never leave me, never forsake me. Praise God. He has always been there. He's a merciful God. He's a compassionate God. He loves me with an everlasting love. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. When I can't feel nobody else, I feel the Lord. He's always there. He's faithful to his word. And I say to everybody in the house today, you just trust in the true and living God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Greetings, everybody. It's good to have you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise God to those that are watching us by uh, uh, YouTube, Facebook. We give the Lord thanks for you. We're happy that you're able to tune in to us today. And we trust that by the grace of God, you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. Those that are visiting with us, we give the Lord thanks for you. Sister Tyrell is back in the house and uh, the Lord has been good. And we welcome you back home, madam. Praise God. Amen. If you have been in the United States and you get trapped there during the corona virus and, 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 and God get you out of there uh, without being infected, you have to give thanks. Hallelujah. And so we are glad that you're back home. We understand that Sister Sir, well, Sister Service is back home also. I've spoken to her. Praise the Lord. I heard Khalif and family is also back. We give the Lord thanks uh, for all of them. Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. So it's wonderful to have you all uh, back home. And it's good to have those that are visiting. Sister Brown over the back there. The Lord bless you, my there. And all the other visitors, God bless you. Good to have you in the house. And uh, I saw Sister Michelle. Sister Michelle over the back there. Sister Watson, we are so happy that you're here today. Amen. We don't understand. Last week was the funeral service for her daughter. God has been good to her and the family. And they are still standing and still giving God the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We do have babies for dedication that we will take care of us uh, right after the preaching of the word. Then we will have the dedication of the babies. Praise the Lord. We'll also have the secretary who will give us uh, uh, some announcements. I, I, I said some stuff last week. I kind of make some changes, but um, when Sister Walsh uh, comes later on, then she'll tell you about those changes. But what we want this morning, we want to hear the Word of God. Amen? We want to hear the Word. I don't know about you, but I want to hear the Word. Hallelujah! And the preacher is in the house this morning. Praise God. The preacher is a Young man, when I just came to this church, I used to watch him and his, uh, his sister, you know, coming down the road, coming to church, coming to Sunday school. And I, that time they weren't even saved. Lord have mercy. But God has been good. After a while, he saved 
both brother and sister. Hallelujah. And I have the opportunity to watch them grow in the Lord. Hallelujah. And watch God bless them and prosper them. Lord have mercy. And the young man, ah, uh, he grew up to be a very powerful servant of God. And I, I can assure you, he's one of those preachers that the devil doesn't like. Amen. Can I talk to you a little bit? Come on, preach. I need to see your face. <laughs> Amen. You know that there are some preachers that the devil have no problem with. There are some preachers that the devil love. Because uh, uh, sometimes you have a lot of preachers who uh, preach what the devil wants to hear. But this man that I'm talking about this morning, my God Almighty, when him preach the word, Satan tremble. Doesn't like him at all. Amen. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we pray for him. Pray him up. That God will bless him and strengthen him. Because when the devil don't like you, it means that he's after you. He's out to get you. But let me tell you something this morning. Those that God uh, appoint uh, and anoint uh, and bless, uh, the devil can't take them down. Uh, so if you're in the house this morning uh, and you know that you are blessed by God, you're anointed by God, uh, you can rejoice because the devil can't take you down. Hallelujah. He can try. But I assure you, friends, I assure you, my brothers and sisters, he will always fail. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if you are in Christ this morning, and if you are under the blood this morning, my word to you is, stay right under the blood. Hallelujah. Stay right under the blood, and the devil can do you no harm. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. Praise the Lord. As we make welcome the servant of the Most High God, our brother and our friend, Minister Andre McFarlane. Can we give the Lord another clap hand of praise? Can we give the Lord another clap hand of praise? Can we give the Lord another clap hand of praise? To God be the glory. 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 Great things he hath done. We just want to honor God this morning for that which he is doing in us and we want to thank him for that which he is about to do to us amen and so i want to honor god for my pastor and his wife and the leaders of this church can we put our hands together and celebrate god for them <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah and we want to bless those of you who are joining us by means of YouTube and Facebook Live. We say God bless you. Can we celebrate God for them also? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, Father God, as we have come to hear from you, Lord God, it's not about me, it's not about us, it's all about you. And Lord God, you have taken us as a church on a curve and Lord, you have been preparing us, O oh God, to, Lord God, to meet you. You have been preparing us, O oh God, to come up hither. Lord, you have been preparing us, O oh God, to not stay afar, but to come closer to you, O oh God. And Lord God, as I stand before your people this morning, O oh God, I declare, O oh God, that self will decrease and you will be exalted. Father, we be careful to give you all the honor, to give you all the praise, and to give you all the glory as we humbly wait to hear from you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We all say, Amen. Please take your seats. We're going to be reading from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 3. We're going to be doing a few verses, maybe all of it. Amen. Well, I, well, I heard the little song this morning. We've come this far by faith. I believe that that song has been a song that has been ministering to most of our hearts. And 
if it is that you have been through something, we know when we say we come this far by faith, we know that that is a real, real testimony. Amen? We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting his holy word. He's never failed us yet. And the songman say, oh, 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 can't turn around because we have come this far by faith. And whether it is that you are a Christian or a non-Christian alike, I'm sure that that is your testimony. We've come this far by faith. I don't know about you, but I have been through enough battles and been through enough trials to know that only God can keep me in this world filled with trials. All right. I said, I have come through enough to know that only God can keep me in this world filled with trials. And last week Sunday, as I began to pray in my heart about what it is that I ought to share, the Lord brought up a little word, a small word in front of me. And it's a small word, a four-letter word called F-E-A-R. And as the word, as the week, as the week pres um, um, progressed, and as I began praying and, you know, just seeking the Lord about, you know, this little word called fear, I began thinking about what it is that God has been saying to us as a church. And as I began thinking about, you know, the sermons that God has been sending to us, as I began thinking about what it is that God has been saying to us by way of um, the, 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 the spoken word, the prophetic word, the encouragement, the charges, I realized that if we stop and take a check, God is making a very deliberate cry to every single person in his house. And it doesn't just stop there because God has helped us to go um, virtual. So those of us who are following us by way of, of uh, media, if you're following us very closely, God is also saying something to us. And I am in a place, I'm saying, God, whatsoever it is that you want to say to me, I want to ensure that I hear. The scripture reading this morning will come to us from the book of Joshua. I almost said Saint Joshua. The reading will come to us this morning from the book of Joshua, chapter 3. And we'll be looking at, it's not the norm for us to read all of it, but we're going to look at about the 17 verses, yeah? And let's just scan through it. It's very profound, so we're going to enjoy it. Have we been enjoying the word in the past couple of weeks? Yeah, man, and if it is that you have not been tapping into the word, we are encouraging you to tap into the word. Amen? Tap into the word. And Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from, and they removed from that word, that word shit him, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and logged there before they passed over. Continue. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bear in it, then he shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. And I think that's about something like 3,000 feet. Come not near unto it, that, they, that he may know the way by which he must go. For ye have not passed this way here to four. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass before the people. And they took up the, go back, and, and went before the people. Let me read that verse again. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, 
This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, when ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, he shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord our God. And Joshua said, Hereby he shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the um, Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gergashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth pass before you into Jordan. Continue. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of your feet let me rewind that again. And it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of your feet Let's go again. Are we following? Good. And it shall come to pass that as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass that when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people and as they that bear the Ark were come to Jordan and the feet of the priests that bore the Ark were dipped into the brim of the water from, from Jordan overflowing its banks all the time of harvest, continue that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up and heap very far from the city of Adam. That is beside Zartan. And those that came down towards the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, filled and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. Let's see what verse 17 says. And a priest that bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I don't know where this word will find us this morning, but this word will find us this morning. When we read a little back, a similar story, we remember God was about delivering his people. And whilst God was about delivering his people, the simple act of disobedience or inattention a deliverance that should have taken 11 days turned 40 years. And I'm going to do a little bit of a reading this morning to mighty and strong men of God. Pray for me. I may hear my, my, my leader speak a very strong and profound word concerning me. And I am just standing in the power and the strength of that which God has said. Last night it was so nice and interesting that after I was there studying and preparing, you know, you sh I closed the laptop in a row to, to, you know, just get a little juice. And by the time I wake up this morning, minister, everything gone, it can't load up. And I said, all right, that's not a problem. Father wants us to have fresh bread. So the bread for last night, may we have a little junk up on it. Eh? The bread for last night would have been a little bit hard. But Father wants us to have fresh bread. Everybody say fresh bread. fresh bread. 
And so as I began to look at this word, and I began to, Crystal, look at this word for myself, I realized that in this whole matter of crossing over, it's not just a clap your hands, stamp your feet, roll on the ground three times, uh, shake a little bit, speak in tongues a little bit, over it and gone, and then you're done. It's going to take a little bit more than that. Do you know how it is that I know that this is a good season for me? I am having trials left, right, and center. But guess what? The trials that I'm having left, right, and center, it's not a distraction. It is an indication for me that the trials that I'm experiencing, it is said to press something outside. It is said to press something that is on the inside of me and kick it out of me. <sighs> if you want to get grape juice, we have to do what? If we want to get grape juice, what do we have to do? I said, if we want to get grape juice, what do we have to do? If we want to get some good old cranberry juice, what do we have to do? If we want to get some good old sour sup juice, what do we have to do? And so I want to remind us that we ought not to despise the day, Shelley, of small, humble beginnings. Where am I going with this? The Bible said that, um, and let's go back to that first verse. The Bible said that then Joshua rose early in the morning. That's our number one sign. That's our number one indication. I'm going to be looking at that scripture. I'm going to be looking at some of my notes. And we're going to be gliding today. Amen? We're at Joshua 1. We're at Joshua 3 verse 1. Amen? The first start, it says Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed from Shittim or Shittim and came to Jordan and he and all the children of Israel and they loved there before they passed over watch this God told the people of Israel to wait three days at the shores of the Jordan River all that time the people of Israel saw a rushing river hmm? rushing river imagine you get to a Jordan place and all you're looking at is the rushing river with springs, rains laying on in front of them. And I'm sure they must have asked, how can we cross this river? How many of us remember back in the days when they're going over Portmore, you used to have this, what you used to call the first time bridge again? Because imagine God said to you, go over to Portmore. And whilst you're going over to Portmore, when you reach to the causeway, main road right there, so there's no bridge to cross over. Imagine God saying to them, it is time to go over Jordan. And when they reach to the bridge, there is no causeway main road. That no make no sense, don't it? That no make no sense, don't it? Talk to me, man. Me say that no make no sense. We can't fly. Huh? We can't cross it, Rev. We can't go over on the other side. No, we can't move unless there is a way. So God begins to speak a word to them. And whilst God begins to speak this word to them, something, as a matter of a fact, Joshua was not the promised man. They didn't have all the confidence in Joshua. Who they knew was Moses. Moses was the one on the mountain, um, getting the, the commandments, writing the tablets, Sticking it into the heart of the covenant. They knew Moses in the day. But the same Moses that would have dropped the rod, hmm, pick you up back. The same Moses who would have gone up on Mount Sinai. The same Moses on Mount Moriah. That Moses had died. So the confidence of the word that they knew, they didn't have that confidence anymore. Somebody say, unfamiliar. Somebody say, unfamiliar. Every time God wants to move us into a different place and a different stance, he takes us into a season of the unfamiliar. 
The Bible says, now without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we come to a place of unfamiliar. And when we come to the place of unfamiliar, the most normal and common expression, Shauna, is fear. And when we experience the emotion called fear, most time we have what we call a thought war. If I do this, that may happen. And if I do that, that may happen. And if I don't do that, that may not happen. But the battle all begins in the mind. I wonder why our minister Williams reminded us a few weeks ago. He said that God said that we are supposed to renew our minds. Renew our minds. Everybody say, I want a new mind. Say, Lord, give me a new mind. You see, it is so easy that because we have been battle-worn for so long, when we get to the Jordan River, everything that we know is the same old familiarity. If I go to the bank, they may tell me that I'm not qualified. Huh? If I go to such and such a person, the boss, and tell him that I need a raise of pay, they may tell me that there is no scope for promotion yet. If I go to um, 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 such and such a person to tell them I need such and such and such, they may hang up the phone on me. Huh? Everything that symbolizes movement before movement, there is a trigger of emotion. And many of us for long have been crippled by that emotion called fear. F-E-A-R. And I'm borrowing this little one, false evidence appearing real. I would have tried business five and seven times before, but I would have failed already. I would have done such and such and such in my life, but I would have failed. I would have been disqualified or um, I'm ex I'm kicked out of school a hundred times. So all I can see is failure. So God says to, 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 to Joshua, and I want us to not look at it as just the man that had died. I want us to not look at it, not look at Moses as the man who just had died or the former leader. I want us to look at him as an old idea. Use it metaphorically as an old idea or an old dream or an old concept that had died. And here is God saying to Joshua, you are the man for the job. Consecrate yourself. Now, when theologians look at the word consecration, we look at the matter of justification. We look at this other one, justification, sanctification through faith, sanctification through justification. But for me, it's a little bit more than that. Sanctification says to Andre Maurice McFarlane that I must set myself apart for what God wants to do in me. You see, many times we sing the good old song, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. And we sing the song and we get all excited. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. Sanctification requires sacrifice. Sanctification, tell somebody, sanctification requires sacrifice. No man, that person never hear. Tell somebody else, say sanctification requires sacrifice. <laughs> Dixie tell Marcy, I said she can't see her mouth. Sanctification. Uh, 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 sanctification requires sacrifice. What am I talking about? The kind of a sanctification that God is calling us to. The kind of a sacrifice that God is calling me to. Is a sacrifice that last night when I want to watch my favorite movie. I can't watch my favorite movie. I have to sit up and read the Bible. Hallelujah. 
I want to spend a little time listening to my little gospel music and kick my foot and, you know, get all excited and look for my nice little church clothes. But uh-uh. I want to sit down this morning and eat my, my best Sunday morning breakfast. But no, me have to be reading the Bible. Because what God is calling me to, it requires Monica, me putting down my favorite food. And so I had planned yesterday to cook me one of my pastors with shrimp and the whole nine yards. Don't make me feel like me craving. <laughs> but because of the sacrifice of what I need to say to you this morning, me have to put it aside. Come on, man, me have to turn down my pot. Hello, somebody. Me have to step away from going in the kitchen. Mark is smiling behind his mask. Me have to turn from the ideas of leisurely, a Saturday routine, do everything else and just make sure that even in as much as all that I had to do yesterday, me have to focus on the word. Yeah. And here is God this morning saying to us, saying to me, Andre McFarlane, you're not preaching to the people, you're preaching to yourself. And whilst you're preaching to yourself, they may hear the word, grasp the word, and decide to move. So, Vanji, Nelly come the other day and she preached us a good word. Anybody remember what the theme was? Anybody remember what the theme was? You see, sometimes we forget what God said to us. You can't forget what God said to you. Hallelujah. Paul said, let me hold fast to the things which I have heard, lest they what? L lest at any time them slip from me. You see, these days up in the balcony, every time, we see another trial. There are two things I say. I said, the word was, I'm coming out. One. Two. The second thing is, nothing is working against me. Everything is working for me. Is it not written in the word, saints? And so God says to Joshua, are you going to lead the people out? 40 years. 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years in the wilderness. A whole generation would have died. 40 long years. Emmanuel, we have been around for 64 long years. And yet still, there was a vision that God spoke that there are some who have died and they did not see what it is that God wanted them to see. We're not talking nobody on, no, nobody on, but blessed is the dead. We bless God for the Taylor Smiths and the Millers and the Needhams and the rest of them. No feel no way. Who have gone before, who saw that there was a vision for a mega church. Three years ago, this young man, you see, I tell God in this season, I don't want to have any other vision than the vision that he gives to the body of Christ. Oh, you didn't hear that. I said, God, I want, I want you to gut me out. I want you to take out the, the korobunkus, the, the nya nya, the, the things that are so besetting that caused me not to see the vision. I want, when I put on my spiritual glasses, I want to be able to see you, Lynn, with such precision that even if anything else is happening in my life, all I see is the vision. The songman said, give me vision to see things like you do. Some of us, we are seeing a vision, but we're not seeing the vision like how God is causing us to see. Huh. I could have testified about wanting to be the corporate guy. Huh? Could have testified about wanting to, okay, yes, young and single, could be married with wife and children, yeah, but God give me vision. <laughs> give me vision to see things like you do. You know what? It's one thing when you have a vision for your life. Yeah, I'm not ready to serve God yet. Because if I serve God now, I'm not going to enjoy the pleasures of this life. 
That's the vision that you have for your own life. But when God gives you a vision, I can use an example. God give this man a vision from the hills of where you come from again. Where you come from again? Quite down at Moravia. God take one man, I want boss you come up and rep. Him say him come up from power all country boss. Let me tell you something. When God calls you to a work, he doesn't always put you in an aircraft with a first class seat. Oh, you just get into where I'm going. Marcia, when God gives you a vision, he doesn't always put you in an aircraft on a first class seat. Sometimes he put you upon the back seat in a country bus. Lord Jesus. I remember when I just started coming to church, I had a white shirt, a pink shirt, and I don't remember what was the other color shirt. I had a gray pants, I had a blue shirt. Look here, when I remember, my earliest memory of this man is a royal blue shirt with a multicolor tie and a black striped pants. Y'all know my memory, it works. It may not work immediately, but give me time. Lord, everybody lift up your hand and say, Lord, give me vision. Say, Lord, give me vision. Hold on, put your hand down. Me never say the Christians so put up their hand. Me say everybody put up your hand and say, Lord, give me vision to see things like you do. And so God says to Joshua, my good God from glory, God says to Joshua, are you are going to lead the people across this Jordan. Jordan, Joshua being the young boy, let say young boy, no, no storm. God, uh, Joshua walks down to the Jordan, Crystal, and when he walks down to the Jordan, Jordan was at an all-time season of high. The mountains, the hills, they had just, the, all of the rocks and the stones and whatever, history recounts that they had just begun to melt. So the river that was probably, let's say, a couple feet. We don't know what it is. I don't remember. It was a couple feet high. That river would have maxed up and even grown even higher. And here is God saying to Joshua, Joshua, you are going to lead the people them across this Jordan. Now, have you ever been frustrated about being frustrated, about fee being, being a little bit more than frustrated about going in cycles? Have we ever been a little bit frustrated enough about going in cycles? There's not, that, that's not you. My father only drive one old car. Huh? Or let me go a little bit further than that. My great grandfather, I don't know him from my father's side. My grandfather with a little unfinished house until they moved to Atlanta and fix up themselves and God bless them. Mm? Real good. And then my father, another unfinished house, one, unfi one finished, one unfinished, in completion. Talking about cycles. And you think about your mother. Your father, the people who you grow with, and you realize that they are and have been for a long time going through cycles. Here is Joshua realizing, hello somebody, are you still with me? Here is Joshua realizing that Moses is now dead. And here presents an opportunity to break a cycle. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here Joshua sees an opportunity to break a cycle. When I think about the cycles of the people who preach in my family, by the time they reach 50, 60, 60 little bit, they're dead. That's a cycle. Great-grandma, great-grandmother, 
uh, maternally, you see that by the time they reach a certain age, cycle. Think about the men in my family who started out well, sharing and breaking the, the gospel. We're not talking about the doctrines. We're talking about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the time they reach 30, 40, they lose interest and they decide to run off to live out their own ambitions. Talking about cycle. And so Joshua sees an ability. He sees an opportunity, Kiran, to break the cycle. But when he sees an opportunity to break the cycle, he recognizes that he needs the presence of God. The Bible recounted that the first thing that he did was that he sought the Lord. They stopped for three days to inquire of the Lord. They stopped for three days to, I don't know, maybe they prayed and fasted. Scripture say, Monica, some things only go it out by prayer and fasting. Some season, some cycle in our lives only go out by what? Prayer and fasting. And some of us, the fact that we are we, um, um, failing at something, it's an opportunity to begin to pray and to fast, to begin to discern what is happening and how it is that this thing can hinder me and cause me to move in a cycle. You see, the thing about cycles is that cycles, Prince, cycles, when it affects you, it not just affects a one person. It affects everybody that's in your family. Come on, somebody. It affects not just you and those in your family, but those who are, Sister Dub, in your generation. Hmm? Your generation, your relatives, and your generation, and your generation to come. It continues, and it continues, and it continues. But the Bible says that there is, and I'm switching gears a little bit, no other name given on earth whereby which men must be saved. When we're talking about being saved, salvation means freedom. Salvation means what? Being a Christian means what? Freedom. So if you're not a Christian, you are not free. No, 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 no. You never hear that. If you are not a Christian, you are not? No, man, I'm in the wrong place. This church has too much Christian for me to be talking alone. If you are not saved, it means that you are not what? Ask somebody the question, are you saved? Ask the somebody where you beside you, are you saved? Me say, ask the somebody if they're saved. Mm -hmm. Say, you are a Christian yet? Say, I have news to tell you. You're afraid to tell them. Say, I have news to tell you. If you are not repentant, if you have not repented, if you are not born from above, if you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're a dead man. Say you are a dead man and you are on your way. Come on, tell them you are on your way to hell. No man, you never tell them. Say if you are not born from above, if you are not saved, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you are not in fellowship with Jesus Christ, you are on your way to, to hell. Say, neighbor, the reason why I choose to tell you this is because I love you. Me say, if you tell him, say, because me love you. Say, the reason why I'm telling you this, I'm saying, tell them, the reason why I'm telling you this it's because I love you. The reason why, come on, tell him the reason why God is causing you to hear this is because he loves you. 
look them eyeball to eyeball and say, it's because he really, 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 come on, tell them, really, 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 really loves you. In a Welsh revival so many, many years ago, when we look at revival, a young woman, when that Welsh revival broke out, all she did was saying, all she did was really said, Minister Davis, I love Jesus. And from a sincere and pure heart, when you look at all of the revivalists, when we talk about revivalists, we're not talking about the rapid. Hallelujah. We just need to clear that up. Hallelujah. When you look at all of those who cause revival, there are some people who simply love Jesus with all them heart, with all of them soul, thank you, with all of them might, just love Jesus and consecrate themselves and sell out themselves to the purpose. And whilst them sell out themselves to the purpose, God gives them, gave them, gives them a work. And the work where God gave them it don't become a monument. It becomes a movement. All right, you missed that. I say it's not a monument in a stay one place. It becomes a what? Do you know how you know when God has given you a vision? When that which you are doing, it supersedes you. <laughs> it exceeds your imagination. God tell you, say, okay, you're going to Uganda, you wake up in the morning, and by the time you don't know it, you're on a plane, you don't know where you get the first dollar from, but you are on the move. God gives you a vision, and the vision is beyond you. God gives you a vision. And by the way, a lot of you, you are in here this morning. What was the word that um, Nelly gave us the other day? <laughs> God gives you a vision, and the vision that God has given you, Zola. Let me stop and say this and insert. If God gives you a vision for a patty shop, and the $20 that you need for the patty shop is in your pocket, it's not a vision. I see the wealth advisor looking at me over here. Hallelujah. If you don't believe me, go and ask her. That's the wealth advisor. If God gives you a vision, and the vision that he gives you is within the realms of your parameters, it is not a vision. Minister Davis, it has to be bigger than you. Tell somebody, it has to be bigger than you. Kayan, it has to be bigger than you. If God gives you a vision, whether it's a vision to achieve something, whether it's a vision to become something, whether it's a vision for a kingdom mandate, Alva, it has to be bigger than you. And so Joshua begins to seek. He's still in the place where he's seeking, he's seeking, he's seeking. Somebody say, I'm seeking, I'm seeking, I'm seeking, I'm seeking. Do you know that the reason why you are so disquieted about where you are in life is because God has given you a vision that is bigger than yourself? It's good to see you in church. Amen? God bless you. The reason why God is giving you something, as a matter of fact, the reason why you're uncomfortable with your life is because God gave you one bigger vision. Oh, you're not understanding it. The reason why you're not like which fire they know in a life is because God gave you one vision for something that is bigger than you. You think that the problem was to depress you? You think the problem was to cause you to feel sad? You think the problem was to cause you to become crazy? No, it is to cause you to become uncomfortable. A secular songwriter say, pressure bus fight. One day we need to do a sermon about that. Hallelujah. He said, pressure bus fight. I'm going to tell you a secret. When you are going through life and you are going through pressure, it's an indication that God wants to do. Now let me talk to you because they're sleeping on me. Pressure, bus pipe. But under that way I talk about, not that kind of secular pressure that we bus pipe. The situation that you are experiencing now, 
is to provoke you to buy 100 chicken. Lord Jesus Christ. The pressure that you are experiencing now is to provoke you to run to Shauna and say, Shauna, give me a five-year idea of how to become the next millionaire. I said to my friend the other night, I said, you know what? Karan, I'm going back to the drawing board. Because five years from now, I might have the same jacket here, but I'm not going to look the same way. Somebody needs to start dreaming again. I said, somebody needs to start dreaming again. You see, when your mind in the gutters and in the rut, Marvel, everything that you will see, you're going to say, boy, I can't achieve that, you know, because this is where my bank book say, or this is where I live, or this is where I whatever. Who do you know where me come from? <laughs> we are on our corner. Run a one place. Tell them, Minister Davis. Me, run a one place. And the upper cherry gardens, may I come from? When two vehicles for pass side and side, the driver better can drive. Woo, Jesus. <sighs> But guess what, brethren? It's the anointing of God that is on my life will make a difference. Marcia, you see sometimes when they call me for go to some of the conference them, I have to go looking at my closet all three times. When I go to some of the conference them, some of the time all of me have to shine all my shoes all three times. Sometimes when I come from round so, the roads are bad. Till all my expensive shoes are lean so and lean so and lean so. We are around so. But guess what? God has given me a vision for my life. And sometimes when me are walking, I say, Lord God, when you, Sister Wella, when I sit beside some of the people for shoulder to shoulder, there are sometimes some millionaires and some billionaires. And sometimes the truth is, as foody as may be, sometimes when they order some of the things, we never even hear some of the things them yet. Don't even know them. Some, some of me just ask them, I say, what is this? I don't go like some of them, I don't know nothing. I don't know. God gave Joshua a vision. Joshua saw that there was a way to break a cycle. And this proven thing, was God. So this is what Joshua said. Wow. Joshua said, you know, we are going to seek God for three, three days. We are going to seek God. Are you praying for me? He said, we are going to seek God for three days. Joshua got down in a prayer and fasting. Begin to consecrate himself. You know, sometimes when God will give a vision for your life, um, Christelet, sometimes the fasting is what takes the, the disappointment out of your soul. The songwriter said, he drew me aside. Ah. You know, there is just something about when God draw you aside. You see, there is something about when you go through the valleys of the shadow of death. God does something when you go through the valleys. He speaks to us in the quiet, dark, low places. The places of uncertainty. The places of disquietedness, the places where, 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 where you feel depressed, the, the, the places that, that is so unseemly, the places where it seems as though nothing is going to happen, the places where all you see is the Jordan. So God says to him, yes, my good minister, and so God says to him, consecrate yourself. Somebody say, Lord, say, Lord, consecrate me. Say, consecrate me. Say, give me vision. Come on, open up your mouth. Say, God, consecrate me. Uh-uh, open your mouth. Say, God, consecrate me. 
Say, Lord, consecrate me. Give me vision, give me vision, give me vision. I want you to begin to pull it on yourself, pull it on yourself, pull it on yourself. Come on, open your hands, open your hands, pull it on yourself. Say, God, give me vision. Say, God, give me vision. Say, Lord, give me vision. Say, Lord, give me vision. Come on, your mouth. Let me help you. Say, Lord, give me vision. Yeah, man. Say, Lord, give me vision. The vision to do better. Come on, say the, the vision to do better. Yeah, man. The vision to be better. The, the, the vision to, to, to be greater. <laughs> say, Lord, give me vision. Give me vision. Give me vision. I feel like God in this place wants to stir up somebody's vision. So Joshua, he went up into three days prayer and fasting. That's my interpretation of it now. You see, every person for the vision that God gives them, they need their own experience. Before Moses, di Moses died, Moses went up into Mount Sinai, Mount Moriah. This time, Joshua it's his time to go up because there's an, an instruction. Before, before every move of God, there proceeds a song. It can be a prophetic word. It may be psaltery, hymns, sounds, whatever. There proceed a song. And what about if that deal fell through? What about if it is that, that thing that God has placed in your heart? It died. What about if... It didn't come to pass. And you became broken hearted. And you became wounded. Huh. Somebody is moving out of the service today. And you're going to be moving from the comforts of your home. Because where God has you. Where God wants you. The place that you live right now. Does not accommodate that shift. Does not accommodate that shift. So you have to move from that house. You have to move from that physical location. Because in that house, Lord Jesus, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But in that house, all you can see and feel is the cloud of darkness. The cloud of depression. The cloud of suppression. The cloud of anxiety. The cloud of fear. The cloud of weariness. The cloud of anguish. The cloud of loneliness. But guess what? This morning I was listening to a particular preacher. And whilst I was listening to the preacher, he said, We have got to learn to use what it is that God has given us. And let me tell you something. This morning I don't have a lot. All I have is a big old mouth and the word of God. This morning, I don't have a lot. But all I have is a big old mouth and the word of God. A little oil. I said to my good old friend the other night, I said, you know what? I didn't understand what the teaching was about the wise and the foolish virgin until now. You see, the Bible said that some of the virgins, they had a little oil in their lamb and some had excess. There's some of us in the house this morning where I'll pan low. Where I'll pan what? We are burned thin. We're weak, dark, rusty, shadowy. Hmm. Just not right. But in this three day experience, we can finish the rest one next Sunday night. God said to Joshua, it's the time to go across Jordan. Joshua go up on the tree day, consecrate himself, hear the instruction of God, prepare the ark, him and the people. As a matter of fact, the ark was symbolic of the presence of God. Joshua said, I will not go except your presence go before us. 
God give Joshua the instruction. He said, listen, 200 cubic feet, 200, I saw 200 cubic feet, 3,000 feet ahead. Make the priest go before. Joshua start listening for the instruction. Every deliverance from a cycle requires an instruction. I said, go. Every deliverance from a cycle requires an instruction. Some of us, we're not listening to the instruction. That's why we keep on repeating the cycle. Oh, oh, that's not for you. That's for me. The reason that would cause me to keep on going in a cycle is because I'm not listening to the instruction. So I have to clean out my ears. Everybody do this. I hear your finger. I hear your ears. Do this. Do this. Do you know what this represents in the government of God? This represents the teaching. Come on. This represents the teacher. So when the word systematically goes in your ears, I'm going to teach you a secret. Try push this thumb in your ears. Feel uncomfortable? Hmm? Try this one. I cleaned my ears this morning. I'm all right. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Still feel a little uncomfortable? Try this one. Come on, try it. It's yours. Still feel a little uncomfortable? Huh? Let's try this one now. Still feel a little uncomfortable? Come, Barbara, try it. This one. Try it. Still feel a little uncomfortable? But this symbolizes the teaching. When God begins to teach you, he begins to rewire your brain. Ah, you never hear that. I said, when God begins to teach you his ways, he begins to rewire your brain. Come try, 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 try. Say, Lord, in this season, come brown, try it. Brown, try it. It feels good. Try it. Say, Lord, rewire my brain. Say, teach me. Say, teach me, Lord. Say, Lord, let me hear. Say, Lord, clean out the wax. Say, clean out the wax. Someone with the wax is in our ears too long. Say, Lord, clean out the wax. After the three days, Joshua could, there are 17 verses, we're still at verse 1. After three days, Joshua, ears begin to clean out. Lord Jesus, some of us, you are so sad because your ears need to clean out. The wrong things have been in your ears too long. The wrong things have been in your ears too long. You've been hearing the wrong thing too long. Say, Lord, clean out my ears. Joshua couldn't allow what the people, because of their past experience and what their ancestors had said to them, um, Sister James, he couldn't allow the bad experiences and the history. Uh huh. Twelve men, twelve stones. He could not allow just the former story to be his story. He had to seek God for what it is God wanted him to do. It was crossing the Jordan. Stand to your feet. His idea was crossing the Jordan. You see? Crossing this Jordan, Tyrell, crossing this Jordan sometimes requires throwing your hands down, getting before God, putting down the presuppositions, putting down everything that we we think we know that we know that we know that we think we didn't know and the fact that we didn't know what we think we know, it means putting down every single thing and say, God, it's me again. It's me again. It's me again. Some of us just need to say, Lord, it's me again. Lord, it's me again. Lord, it's me again. Somebody say, Lord, it's me again. Say, Lord, it's me again. In the balcony, Lord, it's me again. Some of us, we had gotten comfortable with the little one breakthrough and the little one blessing that God had given us. Uh-uh. 
I tell you four years ago that I'm developing a new habit. I am like a hungry dog going after God and going after everything that he has for me. Do you think God, that God has exposed me and highlighted me for nothing? The reason why Karen, he has decided me to, to, he has decided to take me among people who, who are like me is because they have accessed something that I need to access. They have experienced something that I need to experience. They have tasted something that I need to taste. You think that God going to just make you pass the Pegasus Hotel because he wants you to see it look? Uh-uh. He wants you to go in there and he wants you to eat. Eat of the best. Drink of the best. Live up among the best. Operate among the best. Walk among the best. Marcia, be among the best. Shauna? Huh? Huh? And if they want it, we will take it. I begin in my mind to see. Shauna, let me just agree. Let's just agree. They don't want to agree, but let's just agree. I begin to see myself on the walls again. Some of you, you, need, you, it has been so long since you have been the best employer. You say, boy, I one person keep on and get best employee of the month. What about me? Lift up your hand. I say, Lord, I'm ready to go on that wall. Put your hand down. Let me get you a little bit more familiar. You see this man right there? We're not talking about the men on the TV that we don't know about. We're talking about those that are around about us. The man who came up on the, on the little bus. But yet still God set him up to lead a church with a couple hundred. Some of them, they are Jamaica. Some, they are America. Some, they are Canada. Some, they are England. <laughs> spread out. Not just spread out. Let's say it another way. Spread out. Glory to God. God give this man a word a few weeks ago. How many thousand viewers? 16,000? Huh? He's just so modest. Look at him. Just 300 and something thousand followers. Yeah? Huh? One video. 300 and something thousand viewers in less than a few days. Put your hands together and celebrate God in him. Brother, let me tell you a secret. You saying Bolt went on the field. I tell you this before. And in nine point odd seconds, his name went around the globe. I'm not telling you about somebody that I don't know. I'm telling you about one that I know. Right in this body. Huh. God wants to send somebody's name around the globe. Just as though he sent Joshua's name around the globe, God wants to send your name around the globe. Close your eyes right where you are and begin to talk to him. For over one year, I did a retreat some, some time ago, about a year and had ago. And since that retreat, I tell them, I say songs like, for your glory, I'll do everything. I don't sing that song over one year. But my heart is in a place where I can't go back to singing that song. I can't go back to saying, Lord, I realize that I can't accomplish this vision that you have given me unless I am fully aligned to your purpose. I'm not afraid. I say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid if tomorrow them tell me to say, go on to your yard. I'm not afraid. Because guess what? I am all for the purpose. I'm all for the will. His will. That's what I was created for. Lord, if I find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart's cry. Yeah. 
somebody needs to recommit to him this morning. Just to see you, to behold you as my King, your glory, I will do anything, Lord, just to see to a close but right where you are you don't have to be here, right here at 15 Allen Jackson Avenue 15 Broadleaf Road in the comfort of your home or your office or wherever you are God is saying I want you to cross that Jordan but you cannot cross that Jordan without me and just in case there was a level of defeat in your spirit, God wants you to know that he has come to rid you from that feeling of emotional defeat. In case it is, you are scarred. You may have been abused. And because of that abuse, all you are seeing is the abuse. You're in the midst of a bad marriage. All you can see is just that, that marriage coming to an end. You have a newborn. Things are very rough and hard and tough. And all you can see is, I don't have enough to take care of this child. God wants to help you this morning. You may be a Christian, and you know that God has called you to more. But you know that you have not been walking in that which God has called you to do. This is the morning. 
not to start over, but for seeking and for moving forward. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for calling us to the Jordan this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that your word reminds us that we are more than conquerors through you that have loved us. And so, God, this morning as we come, Lord God, praying and seeking you, we thank you, Lord God, that there is no more defeat in our spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that there is no more trial and no more pressing in our spirit, but we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are overcoming. I want somebody to begin to see as Jesus sees. Begin to see yourself as God wants you to see. Begin to see yourself as the word suggested a few weeks ago coming out. And so we bless you this morning. Those of you who are joining us by way of Facebook Live and, and YouTube. If it is that you need prayer, even, as we, even after we have closed this, this broadcast, we want you to shut us a message. If it is that you are not a Christian, we encourage you to just drop us a line. If it is that you want somebody to journey with you, there are leaders in this great fellowship that they are willing to journey with you and to bring you into that which God has called you to do. And so we bless you. And we say, what good right from here at the live location? This morning, the reason why I call you down here is because whenever God sends a word, before I deal with you this morning, you're a Christian and you're in the house this morning, and you feel like God is saying something, I want you to begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him. 